Hello everyone, I'm Nate and welcome to the channel. On this segment of Let's Talk Yo-Yo, we are going to talk about vintage yo-yos. All right, let's get into it. So I have here um, a bunch of yo-yos, um, just a few of the ones I've collected over the years, some from my childhood, right? Because I'm old enough now to be vintage. I looked it up, so technically if something is vintage, it is at least 20 years old, 20 to 100 years old. Um, after that point, I guess it's considered antique. And then there's also the term retro, which is oftentimes used even for new things that kind of have that old school kind of vibe, right? Um, so you see that with yo-yos now that like are modern yo-yos that are retro style that are kind of you know maybe some features like high walled or things like that or or something that's tug responsive even that's sometimes considered retro but these are actual vintage yo-yos some of them are just right on the edge i think of 20 years but we're going to call them vintage for the sake of the video here today um uh, let's start with the oldest one that I have. I think it's the oldest. Here's the first one. This is, I believe, the oldest one that I have currently that I would consider a, a really a, a playable yo-yo. Uh, so this is the Duncan World Class. Now I will tell you that this one, the one I have here, is not in the best of condition. Um, actually, while I was kind of playing it a little bit uh, earlier today, uh, one of the caps popped off. But this is not a take-apart yo-yo. It has a metal axle and uh, but it is a fixed axle yo-yo. But one of the cool things about this yo-yo, what I like about it, is it's got quite a bit of heft to it. Um, it is a, a large yo-yo, but also it's pretty hefty. Uh, and one of the things that, one of the reasons why it's hefty is because it actually has metal rings, uh, very thin metal rings on the inside. And it's kind of hard to tell with this, um, with this red here, but it actually does have like very, very thin rings here, right behind the caps. I picked this up from Duncan site, actually, a number of years back. They were having some kind of fundraiser, I think, or something, I can't remember. But I picked this one up and I really enjoy it. Originally it was manufactured in 1980, and then it was reprinted with the same mold in 1990. So I'm actually not positive which one this is. But either way, I believe it is the oldest one that I have that I'll be showing you today. Real quick too, um, just a simple plug here for Yo-Yo Museum. So yoyomuseum.com uh, is a great site to check out. It has a great database for vintage yo-yos, for collectors, also antique yo-yos too. It's pretty much gonna have everything there and it even has modern yo-yos as well. Um, and you should check that out. If you've never been on that site, it's very cool for those who appreciate uh, sort of the history a little bit behind some of these yo-yos. They have a little write-up there, plus it gives you all the details about the yo-yo itself, the manufacturing date, maybe even how rare it was, things like that. So if you do find something, maybe you're, you know, maybe you're going uh, to a flea market or something like that and you find something, maybe go on their website and see what, you, what you're looking at, right? One of the things that I think why you should pick up a vintage yo-yo, this would be a really good candidate. First off, it's still playable, right? It's if, if I were to, if I had one that was in perfect condition, uh, I could glue this one up and it would be working just fine without falling off the cap. Now I've been actually been yo-yoing a couple of minutes and haven't had the cap fall off yet, but it did fall off earlier today. So I'm expecting it to do that at some point. But one of the things that with a, a vintage yo-yo or, or they're not all the same, right? Every design's a little different, just like today's age. Um, but one of the things that you're gonna notice is that you're gonna have to have a little bit more, um, just a little bit more nimbleness you're gonna have to be a little bit more gentle uh, with a yo-yo like this. So like for instance, if I'm doing something like um, a classic trick, like split the atom, okay? If I'm doing that trick, I can't just like rush into it like normal. I have to kind of just pace myself differently because I have to pay attention to the string in the gap um, because it's gonna bind up easily on itself. Um, and I think not to sound like the old guy in the room, but like I feel like modern players who've never experienced something like this or, or really haven't played with tug responsive yo-yos that much are missing out because it does smooth your play substantially. Um, if nothing else, it gives you a challenge that it just doesn't have that crutch that you have with, see like right there, if you're not careful, it's gonna bind up on you. 
and I'm using prestige string here, by the way. So like I'm using modern string, it's pretty thick. I could use a thinner string and probably get away with a little bit more gap play, but um, so there you have it. So that's the world class, one of my favorites, really just big, beefy, hefty yo-yo, but really still thin line enough that you can throw it in a pocket and it's cool. I would love to see a reprint of those. Next, we're gonna go to, I'm not sure if it's the next oldest or not, but we're gonna go to the Super Yo Wildcat. I have this groovy one here. Check this one out, I love this. It has that, uh, that I don't know if what, I think these were done like at the, whenever there was a color switch between one color to another. So I have, I used to have a couple of these and I gave them away, but you see that kind of bunch of different colors in one. Really cool, I love these caps too. You can definitely tell how old it is here. Let me write that up here. But yeah, super cool, right? Got that tiger on there. Arr. All right, Wildcat. So this is also another fixed axle yo-yo, but this has a wooden axle. Also take apart, uh, whereas the uh, world class was not take apart. So if you get a knot in it, it's standard. So really nice, just, you know, uh, butterfly, you know, shape, classic shape, but nice high wall there and a wooden axle. It's really consistent response. It's still one of my favorite fixed axle yo-yos um, just cause it's, it's, it's just, it just plays well. But anyways, love this yo-yo. That's the Wildcat Super Yo. Uh, even has superyo.com. So it's not that old, right? Uh, they, but they don't, I don't believe they make these anymore. I could be wrong. Um, and, and sometimes actually you can pick these up uh, even brand new uh, because they're not so old that you might be able to find some, I don't know why I'm air quoting a lot today. They're not as old as some others here. So you might be able to still find them in package if you search long enough on eBay, places like that. Yo-Yo Sam used to carry some of these. You could check there as well. And, um, and uh, they might have some of these vintage Yo-Yos as well. And there might be a few other sites I don't know of. So if you do know of something, let me know in the comments. The next one's another plastic yo-yo. This is the uh, Spintastic um, Manta Ray. All right. And I've actually um, taken this one. This is a clear one. I just like the look of that clear, right? Um, and I've taken it and took the caps. There's actually two sets of caps on this one. I flipped one over and I flipped the other one over. So it's just white. I just, I like the look of that. You do see, th because it's clear, that it does have a metal ring there. Actually, a pretty substantial um, steel ring there. So it's got a, quite a bit of heft to it, and uh, it's gonna have a lot longer slim uh, spin times as well. A wooden axle too, by the way. This is another great fixie. This is my favorite, like old school fixie, uh, vintage, vintage yo-yo, air quotes, uh, vintage yo-yo. So yeah, I love this yo-yo. And I just like that shape a lot. Really comfortable, really great throw in the pocket yo-yo and uh, just all around fun. They came in a bunch of different colors. I actually have a green translucent one here as well. So here we go. I don't have it stringed up here, but those were the original caps um, on there. The Manta, the Manta Ray there and uh, real nice. Like that a lot. Dale Oliver, I believe is, is this was his yo-yo. And uh, this is, uh, yeah, the clear one. They came in a bunch of different like translucent colors like that. Pretty cool, pretty cool. The next one is the last plastic we're gonna talk about. I had a lot of Henry's yo-yos growing up, and this one was from one of mine uh, back in middle school. Uh, my first, like, expensive yo-yo that I saved up, like, all my pennies for was a Henry's Viper. There, and I don't, I don't have that one anymore. Um, it's somewhere in my parents' attic. I've looked, I can't find it. Uh, who knows where it is exactly. Uh, but anyways, I, uh, that was my favorite, like my, my, my first yo-yo that I got that was just like, oh my goodness, like I, I just had to have more, okay? So anyways, Henry's, was, it was a great company, they're a German company. They had this axis system um, that was like this interchangeable axle system that like ball bearing and then a transaxle and it had its own kind of thing before there was a sort of standardized bearing system uh, where like you could kind of interchange that. So that's what this has on it. And cause you really can't change out the bearing itself. Uh, this is the Henry's Lizard. One of the cool things too about this was a an adjustable gap. So you could, kind of set it up to be unresponsive. Um, it didn't work as well. The, the doesn't really have like much of a response. It has like a starburst type of response. So you could play it unresponsive, but it's not gonna, 
yeah, you gotta find that sweet spot for it. I feel like it plays a little bit better, or ideally, as just a regular tug responsive yo-yo. But I actually really like this shape. I think this would be a really cool shape to kind of bring into, uh, make a, a retro yo-yo, right? And uh, plastic yo-yo, this was a budget yo-yo in their line. Um, I think it ran maybe like $15. I probably had a couple of these. Um, there's a chip in it right here <laughs> where that, I must have hit it really hard because that rubber ring, man, it, it snapped right there. Anyways, uh, still plays really well. Uh, the bearing's actually a little bit rusty, but I don't believe they make these brand new anymore either. Could be wrong, but again, another yo-yo that you could probably pick up uh, without much effort. You go on eBay, wherever, and you might be able to find even one in package if you're looking hard enough. All right, and then the last one is a metal yo-yo. Now they were making these back not that long ago. I think they stopped making this one around 2015-ish. So not long ago at all, but still has that vintage vibe to it. And this is from Custom Yo-Yos. If you don't know who Custom Yo-Yos is, they were really one of the first yo-yo manufacturers to put like quality metal yo-yos out there on the market. And and some of the first like expensive yo-yos um, between, you know, I remember as a kid, it was between like custom yo-yos and like Tom Kuhn um, SB, you know, the server bullet um, and and then Henry's. Uh, really, there was very few yo-yos out there, uh, Play Max as well. Um, very few yo-yos out there that were like in that like hundred dollar budget range. Most yo-yos weren't there yet, uh, but this was one of them. Uh, this wasn't quite up there, but uh, this is the Elite. Tug responsive, A size bearing. You know what's really cool about custom yo-yos is you're gonna pick this up if you are familiar with some of the modern responsive yo-yos like the Weekender or the Gamer or other yo-yos that are like that. Um, this is hitting that spot because it's very light. A very light yo-yo, very thin walls. And uh, it's a great, it's, it's a great pocket yo-yo. Really uh, nice and slimline. On top of that, it's gonna be great for still, it's still gonna hold up. Um, to those modern responsive tricks. So yeah, anyways, I hope you enjoyed just kind of looking through some of these yo-yos. It kind of took me down some memory lane here a little bit. One thing that you can, you can learn from picking up old yo-yos like this, whether you play them or not, like consistently, or you're just kind of collecting them, you can learn a lot from them. I think older yo-yos like this, they have a little bit of a story. Uh, to be a bit of a romantic for a minute. They have a story behind them. They help you also appreciate where we've come, you know? And as a modern yo-yo world, I mean, you have access, oversaturation of companies that all the time that are putting out just amazing work. There are no bad yo-yos out there at all. Uh, but <laughs> if you go back to old school yo-yos, just, they're just, they just have a different feel to them, right? Um, you're gonna pick up a yo-yo like this custom here and you're gonna realize that it's pretty vibey in our modern standards. And I don't know, it helps you maybe appreciate a little bit what you have, but maybe something that you also just didn't realize you kind of needed in your collection. I think I think it's a good thing to, to pick up for those who collect um, and those who are getting into this a little bit deeper. You should pick up a vintage yo-yo. Pick up something cheap, it doesn't need to be something crazy um, that you're never gonna wanna play. Pick up something that you're gonna wanna play right and learn from right and see kind of maybe where the design went into it that maybe kind of inspired some modern yo-yos learn something from it and something maybe like the uh the duncan world class here maybe learn that you know you're just gonna have to play a little bit more nimbly i know a lot of my viewers are in my age bracket right so maybe you yo-yoed whenever you were a kid back in the 80s 90s what have you early 2000s what was your favorite vintage yo-yo uh what was your favorite old school yo-yo as a kid and why, all right? All right, that's gonna do it for now. See you in the next one, later.